would like to start by thanking the organization for giving me the opportunity to present our poster here. Um, we are now living a new era in for cellular and uh, tissue morphology, and this is possible because we have we can now prepare samples in close to native conditions and uh, study subcellular architecture not only in isolated cells but also in cells in their functional uh, tissue context. As Rebecca mentioned before, we also have advanced microscopes that allow us to uh, get information from these samples at different levels of resolution. And very importantly, uh, there are continuous uh, developments in software and uh, capabilities for uh, image processing. So, um, we are particularly interested in the lab in uh, understanding and exploring the potential of 3D electron microscopy in the biomedical context. And we have been working for years in Huntington's disease. Uh, this is a devastating inherited neurodegenerative disease that affects a part of the brain that is called the corpus striatum, uh, that it's involved in movement <coughs> control. And more precisely, it affects medium-sized spiny neurons, a type of neurons uh, that are present in this, in this area of the brain. So we wanted to explore the uh, subcellular alterations that occur in Huntington's disease. As uh, this is a monogenic disease, there are pretty good models of mild models of the disease, and this is the one we have been using. Um, when we started this work and to go through the project, there had been evidences from other groups that mitochondrial structure operations were occurring in Huntington's disease. But basically, most of these studies were done in 2D approaches and were performed outside the native brain context. So this is our workflow. What we do is um, just uh, take the brains from the mice uh, extract a uh, surgical 200 microns slices and then punch uh, samples from the area that is most affected in Huntington's disease. And then these samples are vitrified by high pressure freezing. Ideally, it would be great, and this is something we want to do in the future, uh, continuing uh, in a full prior workflow as, a, as we heard before. This is still a bit of a challenge for tissues and uh, a bit difficult to do um, a, a project as the one I'm presenting here. So do, we do this intermediate approach of free substituting the sample and embedding it in resin, in HM20 lower field resin, and then subject it to tomography or FSM. So why is it so good to, to do a multi-scale approach when uh, studying biological sample? It's good because you can uh, obtain complementary and very valuable information from the different techniques. And uh, for example, with FinSEM, you can get the, the full view of a neuron and all the mitochondrial network inside. While if you need to have uh, more precise uh, information, you have to, to in detailed information, you have to go to electron tomography to get these precise uh, details at high resolution. So we subjected the samples to fifth cell analysis, and here I'm showing you to the slices of volumes from medium-sized spinal neurons of a wild type and two uh, HD uh, neurons. And you can see the neurons here in their brain uh, tissue, brain tissue context. And uh, mitochondria are easy to uh, identify all through. So uh, we did an analysis of um, a gallery I'm showing you here a gallery of um, typical mitochondria found in the wild type and in the HD neurons. And as you can see, they really look uh, different. And what we could find is that in the wild type, mitochondria are like the slim roads that, depending on the orientation, they can look like uh, circles, ellipses, or long roads like these ones. 
and then they have an homogeneous inner uh, density and trees are uh, not able to be uh, distinguished because they are tightly packed. We can only see the shining dots that are uh, uh, matrix granules. But in the HD, we can see, and take this as an example, or this one, that mitochondria are swollen, they are irregular, and then we have, they are no longer homogeneous, and we can distinguish, distinguish the crystal because they are separated. And they also have um, empty cavities in the, in the matrix. And it looked like, uh, although we didn't have enough resolution here, that mat matrix granules are more apparent here in the HD uh, mitochondria. But as I, as I mentioned, if we want to, to have a full view, a full picture of the mitochondrial network, we, we have to go to 3D visualization. And here I'm showing you 3D views of a volume from a wild type and from uh, two uh, HD mirrors, and you can see that they really look different. And basically, in the wild type, we have uh, these mitochondria that are like slim and thin uh, rods. Well, the mitochondria are segmented in this yellowish color, and uh, they they look like very uh, connected to each other. They are interlaced one to, to the other, and they form a, a real complex network that covers basically all the, 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 the cytoplasm of the, of the neuron. While in HD, uh, uh, mitochondria are like isolated, and they don't, don't cover so much the, the cytoplasm. And it's clearly evident that the mitochondrial network seems to be distorted here. So we decided to make an objective quantification of all these mitochondria and uh, did uh, measurements for all these mitochondria. And what we could find was that indeed there were differences. We could detect in a quantitative way these alter alterations. And we found that the number of edges in HD is uh, significantly lower, while surprisingly the, the, the total volume of mitochondria was not significantly different. But then we could see that mitochondria in HD are uh, shorter and wider. And this scatter plot is showing this, that uh, in the wild type uh, mitochondria are long and slim, uh, while in the HD model they are shorter and wider. And this uh, shows that there must be uh, uh, some uh, mitochondrial fragmentation and fission in the HD model. So, but if we want to go to the details, the details we were not able to um, analyze uh, with fifth sem of the uh, major granules. We, we, we need to zoom in and use a technique that is providing higher resolution as electron tomography. And you can see here that we can see those differences in the shape of mitochondria we have uh, seen before. And, and what we could do was just uh, segment all those uh, matrix granules and uh, quantify their volumes and indeed confirm in a objective quantitative way that uh, matrix granules are significantly uh, bigger in uh, HD conditions in the, in the mitochondria of uh, HD neurons. So this is where finally to tell you where we work. We are here in Asturias in the north of Spain, a true paradise. And I would like to thank the, the people in the lab and especially to former members of the lab that were very important when we initiated this uh, project in Madrid. I would like to acknowledge our collaborators in Zaragoza who have been essential for the fifth sem analysis and the different facilities at the CMB in Madrid that it was where we initiated the, the work and we are still work, collaborating and working with them very tightly. And this is our website and I would like also to thank the different funding bodies for the support. Thank you.